The city of Bakersfield, California is known for its oil and agriculture industries as well as country music, popularized by the likes of Buck Owens and Merle Haggard. Just down the road from Kern County Raceway Park, where we kick off the 2015 season of the NASCAR k and Pro Series West. Kern County Raceway Park, a relatively young racetrack built back in 2013, and the young fans showing up in droves tonight as we get ready for 150 laps, 75 miles. Some new faces, including Nicole Bihar, will be behind the wheel of that number 33 tonight as we're under the lights for short track racing in the Napa Auto Parts 150 from Bakersfield, California. As the cars line up on the front stretch alongside Jeff Burton, Steve Letarte, and Heather DeVoe, I'm Rick Allen. It's a gorgeous night for racing, 71 degrees. It's this fairly new facility, really smooth pavement. This is the kind of weather conditions that really will make for some great racing side-by-side -side action. Yeah, and this is a great series. You know, this series is all about giving young guys a chance to showcase our talents against more experienced people in, in what probably is more of a traditional stock car versus maybe coming out of late models or something. So this is a, this is a wonderful opportunity to go try to do something a little different, a different kind of car. And where is Kern County Raceway Park located? We're just a little north and east of Los Angeles, about a two-hour drive to get to this half-mile racetrack. And a lot of very famous names have come out of the Bakersfield area, probably none more famous than 2014 Sprint Cup champion Kevin Harvick. For more on this series, let's go trackside to Heather DeBow. It's a season for change here in the K&N Pro Series West. The most obvious change is the new composite body that will be required of the teams come 2016. Now this new body is lighter, more cost efficient, and it gives these cars much more of a stock look and it makes them more similar to the NASCAR Spring Cup Series cars. Now another big change is the retirement of Greg Persley and Gene Price Motorsports. Now Gene and Greg have dominated in this series for many years, but there are a bunch of new fresh faces out here, including 12 rookies in tonight's field alone. Now with two-time race winner Greg Persley retired and last year's fall race winner Dylan Lupton moving up to the NASCAR Xfinity Series, we are guaranteed a first-time winner here tonight. Rick? And that is what we're looking for, great side-by-side -side short track racing. Steve, tell us a little bit more in detail about these cars. Well, these are basically the chassis pre-COT in the NASCAR era. They're, they're a shorter wheelbase car. You can run a 105 or 110-inch car. You get a weight break if you run the new composite body, as we just heard. It's a little easier to install. I think it's the future for racing. And speaking of the future in racing, let's look at one of our next-generation drivers, 17-year-old James Bickford. My name's James Bickford, I'm 17 years old. I'm from Napa, California, and I drive for the Sunrise Ford Racing Interstate Plastics number six. I'm hoping to accomplish the championship. That's always our goal every single time we're in the car. We want to win as many races as possible, but also focus on consistency and focusing on, on not having the big mistakes and the big misses because that can really kill you in the series. My racing idols now are guys like Chase Elliott and Dylan Kwasniewski who've, who've gone the same path as me and uh, people I want to follow in my footsteps. Um, guys when I'm younger, it's uh, Dale Earnhardt and, and Jeff Gordon. Being Jeff Gordon's cousin, a lot of people focus on it, but most of the time I'm focused on driving myself and, and doing the best I can. And, and there's no added pressure in the car, it's just doing my best. And Steve, that Bickford name sounds familiar. Where have we heard it before? Absolutely. So he says he's a cousin of Jeff Gordon. Well, his uncle is John Bickford, Jeff Gordon's stepfather. So I can't think of a better mentor, a guy you could get on the phone than Jeff Gordon. And we'll be keeping our eye on young James Bickford throughout tonight's race. The guy who won the poll earlier today, Dalton Sargent, is standing by with our Heather DeBow. Here with tonight's pole sitter, Dalton Sargent. Now, Dalton, you're off to a great start so far in the K&N Series. You're fresh off of a second-place finish at the season opener in the K&N East Series at New Smyrna. Talk about your experience so far and how much fun are you having? You know, uh, running in the uh, K&N Series is really great. You know, it's a it's a good learning place to come for, uh, you know, drivers moving up throughout the series, and uh, I really enjoy running uh, this uh, 55 Galt car, and, uh, you know, it's, it's really ex exceptional to be able to come out here. Now you finished second here at Kern County Raceway in a 150 lap winner showdown. What are you going to bring from that race that you learned to the table tonight? Yeah, you know, uh, we finished one short there, but uh, we're coming out here to try and prove it just by one position. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to have a good car and uh, I'm really excited. And, uh, you know, I learned a lot when I ran that race and uh, it's, it's going to be good. All right, Dalton Sargent leaning the field to green here at the K&N West season opener. 
Another 17-year-old making his first ever start in the K&N Pro Series West. Jeff, and I think you've seen this kid race before. I have. He's a really good young driver. Uh, he's raced. He's grown up racing go-karts. He could race go-karts in, uh, in the United States. Then he and his family moved and been racing go-karts in Europe. A young stock car driver. International experience for young Dalton Sargent. And welcome back to the Napa Auto Parts 150 from Kern County Raceway Park here in Bakersfield, California. Let's talk specifics about this race, Jeff. Well, this race is 150 laps, and, uh, you know, there's no tires. You can't take tires at all unless you have a flat. So these drivers are going to have to make a decision how hard did they want to run. Uh, we've also heard a lot about this racetrack in multiple grooves, so I'm really excited to see where the drivers want to put their race cars. Let's go back to Heather DeBoe on who to watch in the Napa Auto Parts 150. One driver you definitely want to keep your eye on tonight is veteran driver of the number 17 MMI service Chevrolet, David Mayhew. Now, David Mayhew has a ton of experience here in this series and at this track in particular. He won 15 of 22 races in 2013 to lock down the late model championship in this track's inaugural racing season. He also has two top five finishes with a best of third in the k and West Series. Now, he is unsure of how many races he will compete in this season, so he's definitely hungry to get a win at his home track tonight. And has a lot of laps around this racetrack. And, Jeff, how important is that to have that familiarity with a racetrack? Well, I think it's exceptionally important. Anytime you know a racetrack, then you know all the little small things about it. So where do I want my car to be? How hard do I want to drive the corner? Where can I hurt tires? All those things make a difference. And it helps a lot in practice. When you unload in practice, you already know how a car should feel, and you might be able to get there a little bit quicker. Let's take a look at our starting grid. Dalton Sargent, Brandon McReynolds making up row number one. Yeah, Brandon McReynolds, the son of longtime Cup Creek Chief Larry McReynolds. I think that racing history in his family surely helps him out. Yeah, no question. And his teammate, Chris Eccleson, uh, here's a young driver. He only ran four races last year in this series. But a lot of people think that he can be a contender for the championship, driving for a good team. He actually ran some truck series races, so he has some good experience, even though it's limited. And back in the 11th row, Ron Norman out of Davenport, Iowa, making the long trip out here to the West Coast. Field once again all in line behind Dalton Sargent, Brandon McReynolds. Dalton Sargent has chose the outside line. That may become a tendency here at Kern County Raceway Park. We're about to find out. Green flag in the air on the 2015 season. Through one and two, the battle for the top spot continues. And oh, into the wall, it looks like Ryan Partridge already catches the wall coming out of two. Yeah, it's really early in the race to be hitting the wall. You know, this is even, lap one's not even over yet. You won't have to deal with those problems all night long. Dalton Sargent has the advantage. David Mayhew has made the pass for second. He gets in front of Brandon McReynolds. McReynolds holding on to third now. Everybody moving up. Looks like the preferred line might be definitely off that white line. It absolutely is, and I think that's what happened to Brandon here at the start. You know, he was pinned on the bottom of the front row, and you, just, you can't get the acceleration off, off the bottom. The preferred lane is definitely the middle to the top of the racetrack. James Bickford all the way down to the bottom of the track actually got a little loose there through the middle. Yeah, and you're going to see that all night. I mean, as you're trying to pinch your car off and, and make acceleration, leaving the corner so you can get next to a guy on the straightaway, you're really putting pressure on your tires, and we're going to see guys get loose. We're going to see them get tight, especially in that part of the racetrack. The 61 of Brett Thompson running in the seventh spot. Good battle for eighth just behind him. Gragson in the seven on the inside, trying to get by Partridge on the outside in that number nine. It seems like to me uh, the, the seven car with Noah driving it, he's got to be really careful here not to pinch his car off too much and hurt his tires early in this run because that will hurt him later in the run. Uh, whatever, you, whatever damage you do now, it's going to multiply. Oh, a spin right in front of him. Brandon McReynolds goes around, and he comes to stop. Oh, and another one comes in there. The eight of Johnny Borneman is going to hit the front of that car. Caution comes out. You always hate to see that. You know, Brandon Gorell spins to the top of the racetrack, seems like he's out of harm's way, and here comes a car in the back of the pack. Maybe he got run over, maybe you're trying to slow down for the crash and creates more damage to Brandon's car. There was a lot of smoke coming out of the back of the 16 before he went around. There might have been a problem before he spun on yeah, this one. It sure looked like that. He did have a lot of smoke coming out of the back of the car, and everybody kind of got checked up behind him as well, which meant to me that he kind of had to slow down for some reason before he actually started spinning. Look at all the damage that Johnny Borneman's front end did to the front of this race car. Yeah, you can see the water coming out from underneath it there. Apparently, it's knocked the radiator out of it. 
You know, that, that's going to be hard to fix. You can see they're even not even in a big hurry. Here's the replay we see as he goes down into turn three. Oh, the smoke starts really early. I think you're absolutely right, Rick. It looks like he loses an engine, probably gets in his own oil, spins up the racetrack, and then he, he knows. He knows his day is over. He's already lost an engine, but then to add insult to it and to the injury here, damage to the nose of his race car, which I know he's disappointed. That was a brand new race car, first race of the season. You never want to see that. No, you don't. They spent a lot of time, effort, and energy getting this race car ready uh, to, to come to this racetrack and to blow an engine, first race of the year, tear the nose off of it, first race of the year. Those are expensive, expensive damage and a lot of time to repair it. Short race for Brandon McReynolds. The Napa Auto Parts 150 continues after these messages. Welcome back to the Napa Auto Parts 150 for the K&N Pro Series West. Out in front of the field, it's Dalton Sargent. To the inside, that's 17 of David Mayhew. We'll see how Mayhew does on this restart on the inside line. Green flag back in the air. David Mayhew making that inside line work. Can he hang on to it? No, he's not able to hold on to that position. He tucks in behind Dalton Sargent. They're one and two as they come out of turn four. I think that's the perfect example. You see the advantage of the outside lane. Mayhew actually beat him in and through most of the corner in one and two, but he just can't carry the momentum off the bottom. And then that's how Dalton Sargent got back in the lead. Great run. Back for third, Chris Eggleston on the inside of James Bickford. Eggleston looks like he's going to make this inside work for him. And these are two guys you may see racing for the championship this year. So the first race of the year, sometimes you want to flex your muscles. Let's go to Heather DeBoe, who's with Brandon McReynolds. Tough break for Brandon McReynolds tonight. Now, Brandon, what happened out there? We just, uh, we've been fighting a little bit of drivetrain stuff in practice and third lap, second lap, something like that. Just went down in a three and, and blew up, but it's just part of racing. But our guys did a really good job. I was really happy with our car and just got to stay positive, keep our head down and keep working with our Napa Toyota and just really happy with the effort. Just uh, we got to close the deal and hopefully get a late, little bit of lady luck on our side and move on to Irwindale. Yeah, that's disappointing. Anytime you unload, you have electrical or driveline issues like that. You hope they're, they're not going to bother you through the race, but obviously it ended his day really short. And you can already hear the dejection in his voice. You know, this West schedule is so short that to have a DNF early in the first race just puts you behind. It, it, you don't have a lot of races to make it up. Yeah, that's right. And, and Brandon, he still lives on the East Coast and travels every week to the West Coast race. We've got a battle for the lead right here. David Mayhew making the outside line work. Dalton Sargent staying on the low part of the racetrack. And Mayhew's going to make the pass. He'll take the lead away. That's what's great about this racetrack. I love the fact that it's progressively banked, meaning the middle of the track has more bank than the bottom of it. He was able to roll on the outside of somebody. How many half-mile racetracks do you see where you can race side by side? It seems like this is a really wide racetrack. They're not even using all of the the room that they have in these corners. Really, the facility in general just amazes me. You know, it's hard to invest what these guys have invested in for short track racing. You know, it's one thing if you're a Charlotte or a Daytona and you have a couple cup races, but to come out here and see this beautiful facility, this progressive banking, wide racetrack, makes for great racing. It's a really impressive facility. So Dalton Sargent, he's running a lower line. Is there a reason for that that we're seeing him run what doesn't look like the preferred line? Well, as a driver, you've got to go where you think your car is the best, okay? So, you know, I've been in a lot of races where guys are running around the middle. I was running somewhere else because that's where I was the fastest. You also, right now, in this point in the race, you've got to be thinking about tire conservation. You have to run a certain speed. You want to be re leading the race, but at what price? So he may feel like that he can make his best lap, lap time and be conserving tires a little bit as well on the bottom. Brett Thompson might be thinking about conserving brakes. Man, the rotors are really lighting up on that car. Absolutely. At lap 21, if I'm his crew chief, I'm on the radio. Or if I'm his spotter, I'm on the radio. He might not feel it in the brake pedal, but someone needs to let him know those rotors are that red hot. You have 130 laps to go. You have to take care of your stuff. And we talked a minute ago about conserving tires. It's easy to do when you're running second. It's not so easy to do when you're racing for fifth or sixth because you need that track position. Clean track in front of David Mayhew, leader of the Napa Auto Parts 150. Second caution has come out in the Napa Auto parts 150 this one for John Wood on lap 48 take a look at what happens he's just it's clearly down on the apron you know the we talk about how wide this track is but below the white line the track's very flat he gets his left front tire down there de-wedges the car spins him out it's a wide racing surface but that's that's not part of the racing surface you want to stay above that so David Mayhew is your race leader and 
Making the pass while we were away, Chris Eggleston is going to restart this race in the second spot, so he will be on the inside of row number one. Does anybody have anything for David Mayhew on these restarts? We're about to find out. Green flag back in the air. Great restart for David Mayhew on the outside line. Chris Eggleston now has his hands full as here comes James Bickford on the outside. Yeah, and Chris Eggleston on the inside line there. I'm not sure he didn't jump the start and have to back up a little get bit and make sure he wasn't leading past that start finish line and jump the leader too much, and that ultimately hurt him some. Backed him up just a bit, but now fighting for that second spot, he stays to the inside of Bickford. Side-by-side -side racing for second. Shows great patience to be able to run the bottom like that. To stay underneath a guy in the non-preferred groove, you have to be very, very sensitive with the throttle to keep the rear tires underneath it. Yeah, because Chris could pass him pretty easily right here. All he had to do is just quit turning in the middle of the corner. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the six goes up the hill to Bickford, and 99's got the spot. So he's got to make sure that, you know, he's got to race these his competitor all year long, not just this race. So he has to show some respect. Is that going back to the eight tires or better than four tires mentality? That goes back to the whatever it takes mentality. <laughs> it's too early in the race for that mentality. James Bickford now into the second spot. Chris Eggleston drops back into the third position. Right behind him, that's seven of Noah Gregson. I'm really surprised that we see second through third running the bottom as much as they are. You know, the leaders have moved up, and uh, it just amazes me the guys behind him haven't moved up as well. Here's Jonathan White making the pass on Thomas Martin. Jonathan White in that 31. Whoa, and hey, he is loose. He is loose. That's um, that's not a small wiggle. That's a big wiggle. That's something you're going to have to be careful of. We talk about you can't change tires. That type of slide, again, you see it again. His car has definitely has some handling issues. You can't heat up that right rear tire. You know, these tires have a memory. And with this many laps left in the race, if you heat up that right rear tire, it doesn't come back all the way. You've taken some life out of it. Thomas Martin in the 11 drops back behind that 31 of Jonathan White. Back here, the 33 of Nicole Bihar. Nicole running just in front of Christian McGee in the 06. Yeah, and all these cars, you know, they, they're running more of the middle of the line they're, of the racetrack. They're not running the bottom. Uh, and, you know, some of that has to do with what the people around you are doing. Do you feel like you have to protect your position, that kind of stuff? So all these guys look like they, they got the cars they want, to, want them to be. Not a lot of pressure from the guy behind them. You mentioned earlier tire conservation. Uh, are a lot of these drivers thinking about that? Is track position not as important right now before the halfway break? Well, I don't know if I would give up too much track position to save some tire. You know, this facility is relatively new. And I think that the tires don't fall off here as much as an older racetrack, but it's still the same set you have to run the whole day. If you look at the leader, I mean, Mayhew has a lot of experience here, and he feels he can run hard. He's out here leading. He doesn't seem to be backing off. He could very easily back up to second place, but he chooses not to. With his experience level, it, it's hard to argue you need to save tires, but I do feel that there's some cars out there very patient around the bottom. That looks to me like a conservation mode. A little bit of a gap between one and two, and then... It tightens up back here, two, three, and four. Eggleston holding on to that third spot, and Gregson in the fourth position. Gregson looking at the high side of Eggleston for that third spot. Yeah, I don't like the fact that he's moving around. He's not just committed to one place on the racetrack. You know, you see right here, he's really high in the middle of the corner. He's going to keep trying things, and this is the time of race to do that. This is when you're just building a memory bank to know what works, what doesn't work. I like the fact that he's moving around. And you know what makes this even more impressive? This is Noah's first ever k and West start. So to take a heavy car and have the, the know-how in traffic to move around, it's one thing to go put good lap times together. It's another thing to race. And what he's doing right now is racing. He's searching for a way to pass in front of him, searching for a way to get around the 99 of Cricket Eggleston. And, and you know, that is experience that will pay off in the future. We'll see if it pays off still this evening. Currently running in that fourth spot. Eggleston just in front of him in third. David Mayhew continues to lead laps here at Kern County Raceway Park. You also have to remind yourself that you're at lap 67. You know the halfway break is coming around lap 75. So if you're in a position, and if you're in a comfortable position, now's a really good time to start talking to your crew chief, letting them know how your, driver, how your car's driving. You don't want to take any major risks. It's almost like, for rarely in racing, do you know you have a guaranteed yellow? Well, you know you have a guaranteed yellow coming. How about Dalton Sargent falling all the way back to the fifth spot now after starting on the pole? 
Yeah, I mean, it, it looks to me like he's in control. He's rolling around the bottom nice and calm. You see, very calm on his entry, not really leaving the white line, nice and straight off the corner. So uh, I, I, mean, I don't know what he's saying over the radio, but he seems to be calm and in control. Yeah, the one thing that concerns me about that is a lot of times when your car is too tight, it looks really calm. You know, it looks like it's easy to drive, but you're just hurting that right front tire. So uh, we, don't, we definitely don't seem loose, but he may be way too tight. So Dalton Sargent holding on to a top five position. Let's go back to Heather DeBeau. One unique aspect to this racetrack is that the back stretch is actually elevated from the front stretch. So fans in the grandstands can see all the action on the back stretch because of its elevation. Now I talked with a few drivers today that said the transition from the elevation of the back stretch into three feels like you're going down into a hole. Now, Steve, from a crew chief's perspective, what are the challenges you face when setting up the car for a unique track feature like that? Well, without a doubt, Heather, challenge is a great word for it. You know, as I talk to people all weekend long about this racetrack, that entry into turn three, that downhill feeling, your rear tires unload. They don't come off the ground, but they lose a tremendous amount of load, a tremendous amount of weight on those rear tires. And that makes the car want to get loose. The back of the car wants to step out. The problem with that is you're just starting your corner. So as you turn down into the corner, if the back of the car wants to start to spin out or slide up the racetrack, as Jeff knows, you don't get enough wheel in it for the middle. Now your whole corner's messed up. And as a crew chief, there's very few things you could do to the car when it's unloaded. There's a lot of things you can do when the car's getting squished in the racetrack, but when it comes unloaded off the pavement, it's really hard to fix. And from a driver, you have to recognize that the racetrack is different from one end to the other. If you try to drive turn one the same way you drive turn three, you're going to get yourself in trouble. You've got to maximize the, the car's potential in each corner. So you may not can drive into turn three because you are unloaded, but you can drive way deeper into turn one. And that goes back to the experience of David Mayhew on this very racetrack. The reason why he is out in front of this field and we're coming up on what will be the competition caution or the halfway point of this race scheduled for 150 laps. We have just completed the 75th lap. They told the drivers in the driver's meeting it would be approximately lap 75 around that area. You know, I think they leave it a little bit of a gray area, a little bit of a window. It allows, if there's a big battle on the racetrack, if you have something going on, if maybe you had a restart at lap 70, you could let the field run a couple laps over. I know I'd be nervous if uh, John Wood was in front of me blowing smoke out of his car coming <laughs> yeah. to get the halfway break. I'd like to see that flag right now. I'm not sure I would stay that close to him. I might back up knowing the car. And there's the caution. The halfway break is there. That's got to be a relief to Mayhew. Yeah, good point there. The 36 of John Wood. A lot of smoke coming out of the back end of that car just as he was in front of race leader David Mayhew. So David Mayhew will bring the field onto pit road, but not a lot of things can take place on pit road here, Steve. There isn't. You know, in the K&N series, it's a smaller series. They don't have full-time pit crews. They don't do live pit stops. So under this halfway break, you're allowed to do adjustments that don't require tires to be taken off, the car to be jacked up. You can't open the hood. So you could make simple wedge adjustments, maybe an air pressure adjustment. And I think uh, it's also a great tool for a crew chief to get the information from the race car. You know, it's more than just from the driver. You're going to see right here on the right front of Mayhew's car, the tire specialist is checking the air pressure. He's going to know how much that has built up. That'll tell the crew chief how his car is handling, maybe what adjustments to make. We're at the halfway break here on NBCSN. And welcome back. The halfway break is over. We're about ready to get underway with the second half of the Napa Auto Parts 150. Green flag back in the air. Great side-by-side -side battle for the lead. Looks like Mayhew's going to be able to stay in front of Bickford as they come off a of turn two. Oh, up into the wall, the 27 of Grayson Raz. And when he did that, a little bit of a chain reaction behind him. Yeah, it looked like he got the 61 and the 9, made a little contact there. You'd need to watch to see if there's any fender rub or any damage from that incident. Brett Thompson in the 61, avoiding the 27, got into the 9 of Partridge. So it looks like everyone going the right direction. Out in front, Mayhew running in the second spot, Bickford. Great battle for third now. Eggleston has it. Gregson now to the high side, trying to get by Dalton Sargent, but Sargent making that inside line work for him. Yeah, I feel like Gregson had the uh, the best line, and both of those cars got by him on the bottom. That's really, you know, we're starting to see some guys flex their muscles a little bit, using that bottom to get by on a restart. That hasn't worked until now. And, you know, other thing that's changed is we just came off our halfway break. One thing that they can do at this halfway break is add fuel. 
And, and from my experience, when you put a full fuel load on old tires, that car is going to handle a lot different than it did at the beginning of the race when it had fresh tires and full fuel. And we have a caution on the racetrack. Caution comes out. This time it's Thomas Martin in the 11 going around there in turn number two. So that'll slow the field down once again. We'll re-rack and reset them two by two. Doesn't look like he's able to find reverse yet. That sounds easy, but it's not always, okay? <laughs> I, I, I've looked foolish many times in the garage where I put it in reverse. think I'm in reverse, but I'm in first. And people start scattering when you do that. Yes. So it's a <laughs> yes. little harder there than you think. And we found reverse. He'll get going in the right direction, and we'll get them reset two by two. Now, we talk about how you can't change tires, but if he has a flat, he will be able to put a new tire on. David Mayhew out in front. Let's hear from his crew chief. He's with Heather DeBeau. Here with David Mayhew's crew chief, Travis Bryans. Now, Travis, what adjustments did you make on that halfway break? Uh, we just went up a half on the track bar and one pound out of the left rear. And do you think you guys have what it takes to get the win tonight? Uh, we certainly hope so. Good luck. Thank you. Did he just give away his whole strategy there, Steve? I, I, I love the information he's given us, but I would have been a little more general than maybe the specific <laughs> direction of my track bar and specifically what tire I took air of. But both of those adjustments tell me that his car was getting tight. Track bar up a little bit, a little air out of the left rear tire, probably looking for a little rotation in the center of the corner. That short run, we saw Dalton Sargent making a little bit of a press towards the front, maybe flexing his muscles a little bit to the fourth position now. So they come out of turn number four, David Mayhew on the outside, Bickford on the inside, green flag back in the air. Dalton Sargent challenging for the top spot now as he works his way on the high line. He's going to try to get by Bickford for second. The intensity has definitely turned up. 67 to go. These guys are way more aggressive. You can see how much the nose of their cars dip into the corner. They're really hard on the brakes, driving in deeper than they have. He clears them for second. I think, the, I mean, it just shows the high line. The leader chose the high line. The guy in fourth, he made a run off the high line. And here you have Dalton making, now he's moved to the bottom of the racetrack looking for the lead. And Steve and I are going to talk about track position every single race because he and I know how important it is. So go back and think about that restart. What a huge difference restarting fourth versus restarting fifth. That enabled him to be where he wanted to be. He went from fourth to second. Now he's in position to win this race. And now we still see him on the bottom. We talked about him earlier in the race being on the bottom. Maybe he was saving tires. It looks to me like he likes that part of the racetrack because as he tries to catch Mayhew, he is actually doing it. He's making ground up, running right along the bottom of the racetrack. And let's be honest, if you're going to pass someone, you can't run in their lane. So maybe he's smarter than the rest of us. Use that first half of the race to get his car working in the non-preferred line. And that all starts on Friday. That all starts in practice. You have to be committed to trying different things, but at some point you have to understand, hey, look, if the fast line's in the middle and I can only run in the middle, how can I pass anybody except for on a restart? So, you know, the driver has to be committed. The crew chief has to be committed. Everybody's got to be committed on Friday so that you can be as good as you need to be on Saturday. And right now, Dalton Sargent, very good, running second here in this opener for the K&N Pro Series West. He started in the K&N Pro Series East opener, finished second in that race earlier this year. I mean, any time you can get laps, it, it, it matters. So if you're going to run the full East Series, but you have the opportunity and the finances to come West and get to run in the West Series, laps at any of these short tracks in these heavier cars are only going to help a young man like him. Bickford running in the third spot, that number six. Chris Eggleston holding on to fourth in the 99 and the seven of Gragson. Holding on to that fifth spot. The top five in front of us, and the battle for the lead is heating up. David Mayhew just in front of Dalton Sargent. Sargent all over the back bumper. 50 to go. We're past the competition yellow. I know as a crew chief and probably as a driver, you hear that 50 to go, you get excited, you get amped up. These are some aggressive moves. That's a great, what a great job by Dalton Charlotte to roll it into the bottom underneath him. That takes such patience. Yeah, you got to drive the car into the corner harder, obviously, and then get on the brake and not let the car get up the racetrack. And he's racing really, really hard, but he's racing clean. One of the things we haven't seen is anyone make a really clean pass on the bottom of the racetrack. And right now we're seeing Dalton Sargent try to do it for the lead. Well, he's got to beat one of the best out west. David Mayhew is a really good race car driver. He's going to be hard to get past here. 
Oh. How about that move? A little contact there, if you but he takes it. the lead away. If you got to pass on the bottom, you have to press the issue to get back up into the preferred lane. He did it. He cleared, and there's a little contact. No harm, no foul. It's a little bit of what I was talking about earlier is just quit turning. You know, let the car go up the racetrack <laughs> a little bit and take that spot away. And he did just that. Dalton Sargent back in front after winning the pole earlier and leading the first 16 laps. He is back in front of the field. David Mayhew running second. Yeah, one thing about Dalton we got to remember is a few weeks ago there was a really big super late model race out here. He came out and ran a lot of practice and ran the race and finished second. That experience paying off. The Napa Auto Parts 150 back for more after this. And welcome back to Bakersfield, California. The fifth caution of the day has come out. Ryan Partridge in the number nine stopped on the racetrack after a flat tire. They have got him back at the back of this field and we're ready to get back to racing. Dalton Sargent, David Mayhew making up the top two positions. Sargent has chose the outside line. Green flag back in the air. David Mayhew close to the bumper on that restart, but not able to stay with the 55. So Mayhew drops back to the second spot. Battle for third. Bickford on the inside, Gregson on the outside. It's one of those times in a race, I don't know if you want third. You know what I mean? You may be better off in fourth, so hopefully the next caution you can clear and get to second. You're saying we're going to have another caution? I would imagine that that's a <laughs> distinct possibility. Short track racing. We talked all race about Dalton Sargent running the bottom. He's not running the bottom now. He's not running the middle. He's running the tippity tip top. He's at the absolute top of the black. Now, is this a situation where he saved his tires the first half of this race? Well, either that or they made a really good change during the break. You know, it's hard to know. A driver, if he's smart, he isn't going to get out when the race is over and say, hey, I saved my tires. He's going to hold that close to the vest. He knows if it's working, you don't ever want to give away your strategy. Not only would I not give it away, I would basically pat whatever happened on the back. If it was a great adjustment, I'd be saying I did a great job saving my tires. If it was tires, <laughs> I would tell how smart my crew chief is. Are, about, you, are you saying that, that racers are dishonest? I'm saying whatever strategy <laughs> it takes to win. Gregson on the inside, trying to take that position away from Bickford. You know, Gregson has really been impressive with this race, running the top, running the bottom, moving around with this heavy car, and to be able to complete a pass on the bottom like this, it, it's really impressive. Yeah, and he has a he has a, a distinct advantage. The cars he's driving are the cars that won the championship last year, Greg Persley. So they were able to come to the racetrack with a little bit of an advantage, knowing the cars are good race cars, and let him focus on his driving. Impressive run for the rookie, Noah Gregson, running in that third position now, just behind David Mayhew a veteran of this series, and Dalton Sargent out in front of the field. This battle right here, it looks to me like the 17 has lost a little rear grip. You see up off the corner, he's running a little wide. The back of the car wants to slide. Really opening the door right here for Graxon. It's a nice move to the bottom. We'll see if he'll be able to clear him. Oh, oh, easy. Up the racetrack, four tires, maybe not as good as eight. Gregson not able to make that pass, though, but a little contact there. That's the perfect example, as we talked earlier, as they dropped down into turn three. That seven got loose, needed to move up the racetrack, killed his momentum, had to let the 17 go, fall back in line. And it took both drivers not to wreck, not just the seven. The 17 had to give a little bit of ground, you know, use a little bit of racetrack to keep from letting the seven lean on him, and that helped prevent that spin. Under 10 laps of racing to go now. Dalton Sargent has a three-car length lead over David Mayhew. Gregson's got to regroup now after trying to take that second spot away from Mayhew. Now he runs the higher line. We'll see if he gets a run on him for second. And that's such a fun thing as a driver. It didn't work the last time. How am I going to make it work this time? You have to do something a little different, but you can't give up. You just got to go try again. How about Grayson Raz trying to make the pass on James Bickford now? Raz on the inside in that number 27. Battle for second. Gregson to the inside of Mayhew. Can he make it stick across the line? Gregson got the advantage. Caution comes out. Brett Thompson in the 61 spinning. Looked like there was more than just Brett involved in this one. Nicole Bihar also hard into the wall. A lot of damage to her race car. You see her up at the top of the racetrack there, the 33 of Nicole Bihar. The back end of that thing just demolished. Yeah, she looked like she really did back it in really hard. It looks like a flat hit, like she was going backwards uh, at a high rate of speed and couldn't get it slowed down before she hit the wall. 
And as a crew chief, you don't want to see this, do you, Steve? No, unfortunately, if you're the crew chief of the 33 at this point, you have your headset off. And I'm really disappointed for her. She was doing such a great job running in the ninth position when she got in this accident, putting a great race together. It's important to run all the laps. She almost did. She made it inside 10 to go. Wheel spinning there. That's never good. <laughs> yeah, the fuel when, cell's yeah, on the ground. When the fuel cell's on the ground, you've got it in gear and it's not going anywhere, that means that uh, we're going to the chassis shop on Monday. So the safety crew attending to Nicole Bihar. I want to take another look at how this happened. It'll be in the upper right-hand corner of your screen where this takes place, and it looks like there might be a third car involved. Yeah, there does. You see, as all three of them enter frame right there, Bihar is already backwards going up the racetrack. You see Thompson spinning to the bottom, and it looks like Jonathan White in the, that bright orange car follow him into the frame. You know, it's hard to see from, the, from this distance in this camera angle, but I feel that he was involved. There might have been some contact with him as well. So they'll clean up the racetrack. We've lined them back up, getting ready for the restart. Again, Dalton Sargent choosing that outside line. David Mayhew on the inside. This one with just a few laps to go, we'll find out who has the best restart. As they come out of turn number four, Dalton Sargent on the high side. David Mayhew down low. Green flag back in the air. Oh, they check up at the start-finish line. That's Ryan Partridge that didn't get going. And into the back of him, Luis Terrell in the 74. A lot of damage to the front end of that car. And the caution will come out once again. And we're going to go extra laps. A green-white checker attempt now. Yeah, it looked like a couple cars had trouble getting going on that restart. Uh, you know, and it was almost like in the same uh, road, like cars side-by-side side or close to side-by-side side to each other. Neither, none of them got going, and they all just piled into each other. Luis Terrell out of his car and pointing. Might have been pointing at Partridge because Partridge didn't get going on that restart. Just in front of Luis Terrell. That's unfortunate. Walking is, back to the car. It, well, yeah, you never want to do that. But, you know, this is what happens in these late race restarts because the leader wants to bring the... We see here on the replay, well, we actually have a car on the bottom get loose, and then the nine of Partridge doesn't get going, and Luis runs into the back of him. I, I know he's frustrated and he's pointing at him, but I, I can assure him that the nine wanted to get going. He, he's not spinning his tires, maybe missed a shift. Either way, it, it results in damage for sure. Take another look as they come right at you. And yeah, this is so difficult because... You really can't see them. It's hard to know what happened. It's almost like they didn't even get moving. Almost like they weren't ready to go or something. And I know they had probably had a mechanical problem, but you really don't see tires spinning. So uh, I don't know if it's a mistake or mechanical problem. Nonetheless, as it always happens, the guys behind that always get more damage than the guys that actually started it. We're going to try it again. And the preferred line has always been the high side on this restart. Dalton Sargent definitely with an advantage. He's the one who goes first. Yeah, I mean, if I'm his crew chief, I'm going to remind him he just did this a minute ago. We just had a restart. He got a good, clean restart. We're going to need another clean restart. Don't overthink it. You know, you've, you've done a good job all day long. Don't overthink it. Just do the little things right, and the big stuff will take care of itself. But it could be for the first win of the Canon Pro Series West. But you can't think about that. What you got to do is think about your process of getting the thing in gear. You do it the same no matter what race it is or what part of the race it is. Well, this could be the final restart. Dalton Sargent on the outside. David Mayhew on the inside. Green flag back in the air as they race into one. Oh, Mayhew almost got into him, ran him way up the racetrack right there. It looked like he got a little loose going through two. It's just hard racing, trying to get all you can. Coming to the white flag, man, you got to go. Out of turn four. White flag in the air for Dalton Sargent. One more time around Kern County Raceway Park. David Mayhew running second. Gregson's taken third away from Bickford. Contact behind them, back in the eighth spot. Dalton Sargent, a clear racetrack in front of him. Dalton Sargent's going to win his first race in the K&N Pro Series West. And what a great finish for David Mayhew. He comes home second. Gregson in third. Impressive for that young man. Great run. He did great job all day long in his first West start. Put his car in the right position, upper groove, lower groove, worked his way through traffic. Yeah, and all these guys did a great job. I mean, you know, Dalton Sargent winning his first West race, I mean, that's a big deal. He, this guy didn't have hardly any racing under his belt. That is really impressive. 
He wins the Napa Auto Parts 150. We'll hear from him as he makes his way to victory lane when we come back. More on NBCSN. Car smell. And no cars faster than Dalton Sargent as he wins the opener for the K&N Pro Series West. The Napa Auto Parts 150 and into victory lane. He begins his celebration, climbing up with the team, spraying the water in the background. Let's go to Heather DeBow. Dalton Sargent with an amazing finish and amazing win there at the end. Now, Dalton, your crew chief, Chris Bowen, was coaching you at the end not to spin your tires. What was that pressure like for you to get around the 17 with that on your mind? It was really tough. You know, uh, the 17, he's raced here multiple times. You know, he's really good at this track. He knows what, how to get around here really well, and it was just really tough trying to hold him off, you know, knowing how experienced he is around this place. Now, you had a birthday just a few days ago. How about this for a birthday present? Oh, this is perfect. I couldn't have asked for anything more than a, a win out here in the k and West Series. Well, awesome. Now, you're drove for a new team of Jefferson Pitts Racing. Talk about your experience with them so far. Oh, you, I just have to say thank you to all the Jefferson Pitts guys. You know, they just built this car in, uh, you know, a really short matter of time, and they did an outstanding job. You know, I think they hung the body in about four days, so I really have to say thank you to those guys, as well as all my boys from uh, Harry Scott Motorsports with Justin Marks. You know, they did an outstanding job in getting the car set up and dialed in. Well, congratulations to Dalton Sargent, who walks away with a win in his debut in the K&N West Series. And a lot of celebration and tap for that young man. Oh, the water on the head from... David Adams, that's his car chief. <laughs> Those two have to be very happy. Take a look at our final results. Again, the first win for Dalton Sargent. David Mayhew, the local hero, coming home in second. Yeah, you know, Johnny White, we saw how loose he was early in the race. He was able to bring that car home in seventh. Uh, that was a good night. Here on the second page, you look back at 18th, Raw Powers. He was involved in the last lap incident on the backstretch. Still recovered great, finished 18th. And I'd have to say the most disappointing person uh, in this race was Brandon McReynolds. Led both practices in speed, qualified second, and finished last. You mentioned second. Finishing second in this one was David Mayhew. After so many laps around this track, let's hear how he feels about second. All right, David Mayhew, getting some congratulations from his family here at his home track of Kern County Raceway. David, what a battle between you and the 55. You guys battled pretty much the last 50 laps. Tell us about that. Yeah, that was a heck of a battle there at the end. I knew I knew he was saving there at the beginning because his car was too good for a few laps and then fell back to fourth where on the restart I knew he'd be right behind me there at the uh, after the break. Uh, he saved a lot. They made the right change there at the break. And honestly, I gave it everything I had there at the end, short of wrecking the kid. And he did awesome. He held his composure and uh, had, a, had a great run there at the end when it mattered. All right, David Mayhew coming home with a second-place finish here at his home racetrack. And David Mayhew still looking for sponsorship to see if he could run the entire season and run for a West Series championship. As we look at the point standings, he's currently in the second position behind Dalton Sargent, who we know is running for an East championship. So if Mayhew doesn't find sponsorship, that could put Noah Gregson in the catbird seat. Let's hear from him. He's with Heather DeVoe. Here with Noah Gregson, third place finisher in your K&N West debut. Talk about the pass you had to make around the six car. You were battling with him for quite a while. Yeah, I know. Uh, all the guys at Jefferson Pitts Racing gave me a really good piece. Can't thank them enough. I saved my tires till the end, and we got around them. And we're moving up. Got, got in the third and just got that last restart and couldn't get by the 17. But... Overall, it was a really good day, and I can't thank everyone from Alert ID, Colliers International, my mom and dad, and everyone who supports me. Another strong finish for one of the drivers from the new team of Jefferson Pitts Racing. And I'm telling you, that guy is extremely comfortable behind the wheel, but maybe not so much in front of the camera. I mean, he's going to have a lot of shots in front of the camera. As good as that young kid performed today, he's going to be interviewed a lot. Dalton Sargent celebrating win number one in the K&N Pro Series West. Next race, Greenville Pickens Speedway. That's Tuesday, April 7th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, another track I can't wait to get to, Greenville Pickens. You know, we used to test there a lot for Martinsville. Reminds me a lot of Martinsville. Tight little short track, big inside curb. Great racing. That's what's so great about this series. We saw it tonight, all this short track racing action. A lot of rubbing, a lot of banging. It's why we all love racing so much. And a learning experience for a lot of drivers. Some drivers getting their first win, maybe a, a top five or a top ten. A learning experience for everyone. I mean, this is the crop. This is the next crop of NASCAR stars. Some of these kids you see racing here today, you'll see next week at Greenville Pickens, they'll end up in the top tier series. And you never know who will end up running in the Sprint Cup Series. Could it be Dalton Sargent? He wins the first race of 2015.